let's talk about one more um, Marvel. I don't know. Would you call it a show? It's a movie. They call it a special. Uh, a let's special talk presentation. About, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about um, special presentation. Werewolf by Night uh, from Marvel. Uh, so this was a bit of a weird one going into it, but I'm also surprised uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of discourse about this usually when a marvel project comes, i feel like the i am Groot show got a lot more conversation and even if the conversation was what the fuck is this you know uh, <laughs> are you getting the same vibe like a lot less people are talking about this uh i would i would agree with that in the yeah generally i don't think a ton of people it kind of came and went um that said, the the chats that I'm in, like the Agents of Fandom chat, we have a lot of yeah. horror fans who were very psyched about this, and a few of them got lucky bastards got screeners of it early, so they were ah. able to watch it. They're like, guys, this is so good. So I'm I have been a little more, uh, you know, into the saturated discourse of it, but on my Twitter timelines and things like that, it kind of came and went. So I, I want to ask you this. Why do you think that is? Because I, I, the only thing I can think of is it seems to be marketed a little less than some of the shows. But I, I'm, I'm just really baffled. Uh, I, I, I guess you could say the same about Andor as well, though. But I think, I, I well, I think, I think that's two different things, though. I think Andor got a lot of, you know, got the requisite amount of marketing. I don't think Werewolf by Night got a ton of marketing. Like people didn't even know if it was coming out or not. <laughs> you know, we had heard about it. We had heard, um, you know, uh, Gael Garcia Bernal was going to be in it. We had heard, you know, kind of rumors and then nothing, no production mm. photos. Like we didn't know what anything was going to look like. We didn't know it was going to be in black and white until I can't remember if it was Comic-Con or D23. But either way, you're talking about two months before. Like there was nothing. So there wasn't a lot of time to get or to be hyped about it. And therefore, there was no hype for it. Like, I, I think that's – it's not the same as when you don't release your Thor trailer until whatever yeah. it was, 60 days before Thor comes out. Uh, because we were – we are all familiar with Thor and that universe and, and everything. With this, it was a completely new character. It was a completely new – I mean, it – a completely new vibe for at least for, for Marvel. And it was a new type of production. We've never seen a special presentation. So we, it was just a lot of things that we weren't familiar with. And therefore I think the discourse was just kind of like, I don't really know what to do with this, even though I liked it, you know, I, I, I personally loved it, but what do you do with it? I don't know how it connects to anything else. I don't even know when it's set. Like I couldn't yeah. tell you anything about this. I, it, it makes you wonder, like, would have been more successful if they just added an extra? Because it was like, what, nine? It's not even, it's, it's like 50 minutes, right? Something like that. I think that. that's why it's a special presentation because it's like, it's not even yeah. an hour long. Yeah. But they could have added an extra, like, 20, 30 minutes to it and called it a film. Um, mm -hmm. and it's not like Disney don't have the money for that. Um, but I, I'm thinking maybe because it's in black and white, they thought modern audiences wouldn't appreciate it, maybe. Sure. Um, it's it just, it's really bizarre. Um, cause it's, it's a Marvel film. It's an introduction of a new hero in a way. Um, and also come on, we got, we got man thing. Yeah, um, right. Exactly. Which and is, he's kind of Chewbacca. Like it's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I did not see that coming. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but I'm all for it. I, I actually love it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm just really surprised about the lack of conversation about it. And or I get that there's not much conversation about it because, um, I hate to say it, but like by doing a more mature story, it means, you know, there's less Easter eggs, less cameos, less right. flashy stuff. And that's the stuff that people on Twitter want to talk about. Right. Um, but, but werewolf has that stuff. You got the bloodstone, you got a uh, man thing, you get the werewolf, you get all these other characters and stuff. So yeah, I, I'm pretty surprised, but, but let's get into our overall thoughts. So what are your general thoughts? How do you feel about wealth by night? Um, sounds like you like it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I haven't been able to watch it a second time, but I I watched it. Um, <laughs> I woke up early. It was still dark out. And I was like, OK, this is perfect. I'll watch it in the dark. And I really enjoyed it. I love the uh, at this point, I've kind of had uh, low key Marvel burnout for 
a couple years, even though I love the characters and I, you know, I generally enjoy the projects. It's like, yeah, it's not, it, you know, I'm still chasing that high and it, and it's kind of not, it's diminishing returns. So when something is new, I will gravitate and this was new. And, and, um, I thought the music was great. I thought, um, you know, Michael Giacchino is the, <laughs> he's directing your movie. It's going to be good music. Um, I thought there were some really interesting, concepts like even just like the the guy with the flaming sousaphone walking through it was, that's <laughs> awesome what is this uh and i'm excited to see how it connects because i do like that they've kind of opened up now the supernatural corner of marvel like it's not all aliens and stuff like there's going to be just some legit occult monsters and i'm mm. i'm i'm down with that yeah look overall i guess i liked it as well um so like I said with She-Hulk, a little bit disappointed at like they didn't fully commit to the horror. Mm-hmm. Like I I my my girlfriend's not a Marvel fan. She's not she she prefers more realistic stuff, but I hyped her up on this one because it's like it's a horror. And then <laughs> so we start off and she's like, okay, this seems cool. And then they start doing kung fu and she's like, all right, I'm going to bed. I'm like, damn it! Like <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had one to convert her. Um <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, so they got real into like very early on. They were like, "No, nah, this is still Marvel. This is still this is still very superhero. It just got a horror aesthetic. It's like a retro horror aesthetic. Right? Like the sets look like sets for the most part, but I'm kind of down with that because they're it's it's true to the style. Uh-huh. Um, I, I I believe it's shot in digital. I I wish it was film, but it's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I think for the same reason that it's only 50 minutes long and not a feature length, like <laughs> I think Marvel wasn't really sure how successful this thing was going to be. And so it's like, okay, keep it short, put it in black and white because it'll make it look more expensive. Mm. <laughs> and people will also forgive when, you know, the werewolf is a man in a costume. Yeah. And, you know, like it, it'll be like, oh, yeah, it's all kind of part of it. I'm actually yeah. interested, really interested to see what this werewolf looks like in you know in moon Knight season two or something yeah. yeah what does he look like when it's when you're in a cgi fest is he still there's no way he's gonna look like a man in a, a werewolf costume well i i think maybe we don't see him at all you don't think I, ever i mean interesting like never say never i think it's more like we're gonna see man thing sure. um let, let me ask let me just check so when it goes from black and white to color is that meant to symbolize we're now in modern times or is that just saying like, oh, we're happy now. There's nothing to be scared of. I think that when they go to color, the way I saw it was like, and here was our isolated story and we're back in the Marvel universe. Like, right. you know, like, like this was that corner, but this corner is part of this universe. Mm. I think that's how I interpreted it. Yeah. It, it makes me wonder, like, I feel like, you're right. It's going to look like a guy in a suit and they need to, I don't know. Are they just going to add some extra hair follicles by CGI? I, I don't know. It's it's going to be weird. And I think maybe he doesn't cross over with the mainstream Avengers. It might just be like Moon Knight or maybe yeah. Blade if we're lucky. or <laughs> Anywhere where there's a lot of shadows. Yes. <laughs> I think here's a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, I, you know, there, and speaking of the I shadows. I expect him hanging out with Miss Marvel. No way. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Uh, speaking of the of the shadows, like I think that whole like – the gardens with the, the random walls and the like, mm. it, it, the way the shadows, the shadow play in that I was in heaven. And like that one shot um, where the door is closing slowly in the background and oh man, and just the shadow of the wolf, like so good. That, that was all like, I couldn't believe Michael Giacchino has not directed a feature before. Like, cause that yeah. looked very competent, very, very competent. Um, well, look, I feel like being in the industry for so long, that's, you know, you pick up a few things along the way, I'm yeah. sure. Um, m- like music is very, I guess, tied to things like editing and stuff too. So, so, but it's his directorial debut, right? Like uh, he's done a few like yeah, short stuff. This is crazy. Yeah. He's done, he's done some short projects, but, but this is the, by far the biggest thing he's ever done. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just distracted now. Cause I keep thinking now, what does werewolf look like 
outside <laughs> of black and white. And it's like, I've got no answer for you. I, I feel like usually I would have some some sort of take, but I'm just like, I, I don't know how you solve this problem. That's why I'm sort of thinking maybe you don't do anything. Maybe the specials stay special, but then we've got the Christmas special coming up with Gardens of Galaxy, and apparently right. that's going to affect Volume 3. So Oh, interesting. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, wait. Maybe I'm – no, I think I read that somewhere. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see very soon. I'm excited um, thought- for the specials because I think that there's a lot of stories that they have to – not that they have to tell, that I would like them to tell that don't necessarily fit into a Disney Plus series or a giant tentpole feature. Like I'm uh, – I, I think that we could be getting into like – there's a whole lore about the White Tigers, this like Puerto Rican family from New York that has these uh, tiger uh, – I can't even think of the, what the word is now, but they like can become superheroes. And it's like the, it's the guy and his, I think it's his daughter and his sister. They're all white tigers. And that's okay. never going to, you're never going to get that in the MCU unless there's maybe a special. Like I like well, the idea uh, of these special presentations. I don't know. Man. I'm thinking 10 years from now, another 10 years, if Marvel's still around, if, um, if the superheroes are come out of fashion, which, Will happen one day. Like rom coms has to. Die. Yeah. Rom coms died. Cowboy films died. Um, one day superhero movies will, will, will move on. It'll be, I don't know. Who knows? Cyberpunk will be the new cool thing, or or um, who knows what? You know. Uh, yeah. But um, if we are ten years down, like they're gonna have to start digging real deep to get some characters. Because right now we're about to get Namor in Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, and mm-hmm. I think that's the last superhero i read as a comic that i haven't really seen in live action like like sure there's some villains here and there or some small ones but i used to love namor i used to i i had so many i had a bunch of namor comics and uh, really i did i had a bunch um they're all like secondhand ones that were from like the 80s or something and i had two separate ones where he fought the human torch but i loved name i don't know why like when i think of it back on it now it's like it was so corny but for some reason <laughs> I had a lot of Namor comics for some reason. Um, I could never get around his eyebrows. I was just like, I was like, I can't look at this. I, I well, just, I look yeah. back at it now. Like, how was I so into it? I had weird eyebrows. He had wings on his feet. Uh, he was so corny, but like somehow I got into him pretty pretty hard. Um, and I was really into Vision as well. So like when I saw him in Age of Ultron, I just my mind blew. Oh like, yeah, for sure. And was, then White Vision too, and Wanda Vision. Apparently, White Vision. Oh, maybe it's speculation. I can't remember if it's confirmed or not, but some people think he's going to come back in uh, Armor Wars, which could be I mean, that would make sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know we keep getting off topic, but yeah, Wolf by Night, it's, just such, it's such a weird project. It's a good one, but it just, it just stands out. Um, I think a lot of people look at it and it's so different from what the MCU's done. The, the, the MCU fans looking at it like, what do, I, what do we do with this? I, I can't come up with crazy theories for, for, for TikTok and whatever. But I, I think you got to say the cast is fantastic, right? Oh, yeah. I thought I'm, I was kind of skeptical about Gael Garcia Bernal. I, I, I'm a fan, but it's, I'm, I can't point to like the one thing where I'm like, oh, this yeah. could not have been the same without Gael. And I think that uh, he was great. And, and actually the, the unexpected Han Chewy energy – of Jack and man thing. I was like, I want to see this. I want to see more of their continuing adventures through the occult. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Um, yes. The, the, the Han Chewy. That's a really good analogy that the Han Chew, Chewy vibes. Um, L- Laura Donnelly as uh, Elsa Bloodstone. Mm-hmm. I could watch her all day. She was fantastic. Yeah, so charismatic, I'm, right? Uh, did you notice that she like the first guy she she when she takes down like the big guy with the I, I don't forget what with kind the of beard? weapon he had. The one with the beard? Yeah, the one with the beard. Yeah. The one who looked like a Viking. Um she <laughs> takes him down with the uh with the classic Natasha Romanoff, like wrap your legs around, pull down. I was like, Oh, is she from is she maybe a widow? Was she like a is she from the uh, red room? No, I think there's just some contractual contractual agreement that all female superheroes <laughs> must wrap their legs around your head. I'm pretty sure that's the moment my girlfriend was like, "All right, I'm done. See ya." Like, <laughs> she's like, she's turning to Jackie Chan. I thought this was a horror movie, Matt. I'm like, I'm sorry, I said it was going to be horror. Uh, <laughs> I would love to see Jen Walters trying to do the leg takedown, and she just like can't. She's like, ah, I don't get it. I don't know how I, to do this. I feel like it would be a scene like um, Black Widow and. Um, 
uh, what's her name? Y- Yolan- um, Yelena Belova. Y- Yelena. Yeah, Yelena. I was going to call you Yolandi. Uh, Yelena. Like, where it's like, you know, when she's doing the power pose, like, yeah. why would you do that? It hurts your back. I think she, it'd just be like She Hulk and Black Widow or someone being like, okay, just wrap your legs around your head. Just like, oh, <laughs> no, nah, I haven't stretched. Or, <laughs> right. You know, it's like, oh, well, my leg's too tall. I'll just kick his head off. <laughs> Yeah, um, like if, if yeah, if, if it was like She Hulk in a Deadpool movie, she would just take the guy's head off. Be like, ah, yeah. I didn't mean to do that. I just meant to bring him down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. Um, yeah, yeah, Wolf by Night, fun film. Um, love the score as well. The cinematography yes, yeah. is really unique. I, I love the. Um, they did commit to like the retro cheesiness, which I yes. think One Division also did well. Um, and and. I think that's and oh yeah, I loved the use of practical effects and practical stuff. Like apparently, Man Thing was partially practical. Um, I don't think the face was, but in the final shot, there's some production photo of like a Man Thing costume. That's and awesome. The, and the guy, and I was like, what? That's that that blew my mind. I think like they said it was practical, but it's like I'm looking at that face, like that is CGI. Like. I, <laughs> Especially it could have been stuff eyes. that was like it could have been stuff that was enhanced by CGI, you know. Yeah, like I'm thinking it's like a Deadpool thing where like it was a real mask, but they like animated eyes on him and stuff. Right, right. Um, but yeah, man, look, this is fun. Uh, let me, let me ask you this: next, you, you're Kevin Feige, you're running Marvel. Um, congratulations on the promotion. Thank by you, the way. thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's my here's my question to you: if you're Kevin. And you're running Marvel, and you get to decide what the next project is. What is the next Halloween special? Is it another Werewolf by Night? Do you dive into another character? Is there anything that that, that comes to you? The next Halloween special would be Ghost Rider. It would definitely Ooh. be something Ghost Rider. Yeah, and it would even I would even do uh, that's a Johnny, big one. I would do Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider, but he would be kind of the mentor to Robbie Reyes, and I would do like a a comics accurate 16, 17 year old Robbie Reyes, not the grown man that was in agents of shield, like yeah. a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's what, I, that would be the next thing I would do for Halloween for sure. That's cool. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. Um, it also, I feel like, cause ghost Riders already had movies. Yeah. I feel like that's why they were happy to give him to agents of shield. Um, but I feel like, yeah, it's, if he doesn't get a movie, he's got to get, I don't. I can't imagine Ghost Rider working as a TV show. So I think a special could be a good, a good compromise. That could be cool. I could see a Ghost Rider TV show, like in the classic, like almost like the old '70s Hulk, where he just rides from town to town. You know, like uh, okay, yeah, case of the week kind of thing, kind of supernatural, but with Ghost Rider. I'd watch that. Yeah, yeah. That I, good. I, I would <laughs> count me in. I'd be in. Yeah, you just reminded me when we talked about She Hulk. We didn't mention. Um, how awesome that recreation of like the the Hulk TV show intro. Oh, that was so Marvel. good. That was so oh, good. I was so happy watching that. I um, loved that show. Like I, they used to run it on the sci-fi network here and they would have like marathons. I've probably seen every episode of The Incredible Hulk and that show was off the air before I was born. So Wow. Yeah, I had um I had a VHS of Hulk versus Thor, the the spe- the the, the, the t- made for TV movie they did, mm-hmm. and I think I had, you know, that was it. Yes, yeah, so I I never knew there was a show, but I knew there was a movie. But I, later on, in life found out. Oh, there's also one with Daredevil and the first appearance another, of Daredevil. Yeah, and, and did they action. have another? Did they have another movie as well? Was there a third? Uh, one? Ooh, you're putting me on the spot. I don't know off the top. No, of I my can't head. remember. I can't. Yeah, Anyways, neither can I. It, it's cool. I'm trying to think now because I asked you that Halloween question um, without yeah. having an answer, and I'm just trying to think now. I think maybe I would do. Man, if they had the rights, I would say do like a like a cheesy retro Morbius, but like oh, just, boy. just just to take Morbius back a little bit. Uh, but uh, but then again, I, I said even before the movie came out, it's like doing a, a solo movie of Morbius is dumb. And I had a friend going, but he's got his own comics. I'm like, and I'm guessing they were shit because no one talks about them. <laughs> right. Those classic <laughs> um, ongoing comics of Morbius. No oh, one reads yeah. those. No. Everybody loves Morbius. No, but I, I think maybe I would do also um, – You know, I'd love if, mm. if you're keeping the retro sort of old school, 
give us another take on Hulk where Hulk is like Frankenstein, like the original okay. like gray Hulk or something. That could be that could be interesting because I'd love to see. I know Hulk is now known as the angry monster and everything, but he was originally very Frankensteinish, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that could be an interesting project. Um, and then, I mean, we're going to get Mephisto eventually, right? The rumor, the rumor is Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, I did see that. What, what, yeah. what film was that for? It was for a weird, weird pick, right? It's for oh, it might be Ironheart. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what it was. I don't think because Ironheart has a lot of magic stuff going on in it for some reason. Oh, does she? Ironheart for certainly like, because you know Ironheart's not a magical character. It's basically Iron Man, but. Uh, well, yeah, the, that's why I'm surprised seri- hearing this. Like, I'm like, yeah, no, this the, the series, sure? <laughs> yeah, the series is going to have um, Anthony Ramos from Hamilton um, is going to be uh, the Hood, who is basically like street thug meets Doctor Strange, kind of, you know, like yeah, he has guns, right? He has guns, but he also has like Camertage style magic. Uh, yeah, so he's like teleporting, shooting people. Right, like the, the image of him is like, you know, hit with this hood on and his two guns, but also the guns have those kind of, you know, those like rune shields. That uh, after, yeah, he can do that. So, Dude, that is so like 90s over the top edginess yes. where it's like <laughs> he's got magic, but he also has guns. <laughs> Just in case oh. the magic doesn't work, he's oh. packing, yeah. It's so very, very, very Todd McFarlane. Very, yes. you know, yeah. very Todd McFarlane. Very Todd uh, McFarlane. Okay. Well, um, I think it's time to wrap things up. Uh, is there any other uh, thoughts, comments, anything before before you close the book on Whale by Night? Uh, no, just to say thank you for having me. Finally, uh, we'll go back to chatting normally like we do. <laughs> and uh, and uh, also, yeah, just to check out agentsoffandom.com. Uh, I've got that She-Hulk article. We've got reviews for Werewolf by Night. We also, like I reviewed uh, the movie Rosalind for Hulu and the the Prey, uh, the Predator movie I got to review. So it's a, it's a pretty cool site. We're just starting out. We're in our first year, but we're doing some pretty big interviews. We interviewed um, – the guys on the podcast interviewed the woman who did the voice for Rogue on the X Men animated series. I saw, and she, I saw you posting that. That's pretty cool. She is incredible. She's she's kind of a real life superhero. So and now she's a friend of ours. Like she's she's a friend of the podcast and the friend of the site. So yeah, check out angelsoffanda.com is what I would leave that, you with. That's that's awesome. And uh, keep up the great work there. I can tell you're having fun with it, man. And thank you. And I know um, ha- um, Haiti. Remember, it was a podcast that was loved by so many people. I remember when it when it wrapped up. Um, mutual friend of ours, uh, Patrick, from uh, from 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 his podcast too, was I was seeing him posting about it and stuff, and it was like, oh, it's really nice to see how you guys <laughs> impacted the lives of so so many people and stuff like that. It, it was really awesome. So I'm glad to see you still in the movie space, my man. Oh um, yeah, man. I, I you know I couldn't I couldn't not be here. This is what I. This is what, you know, I've got, uh, I've got ADD. My, my brain needs serotonin at all times. This is where I get it. I get it from movies and comics. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, anyways, um, I think that's it for us today. Thanks once again to Carlos for joining us. I'm so happy. We're going to have you back like ASAP, I'm sure. All right. Sounds um, good. We'll, we'll make it happen. And uh, for everybody at home, um, be sure to ch- keep checking out upcoming attractions. I know some people find us different places. So, and we just sort of changed up the format a bit. So in case you guys need a refresher audio version of the podcast, iTunes and Spotify, just like normal. But on YouTube, they are now cut up into more targeted segments. So while you're hearing this is the audio form on YouTube, there'll be a She-Hulk episode and a Werewolf by Night episode. And um, I know where most of you guys are at, though. You're on our TikTok um, yelling at me in the comments, telling me I'm wrong about stuff. Um, <laughs> and I love it. Bring on, bring on the beef, man. I love it. I love it. Uh, but also bring on the love. We, we, we absolutely love you guys there. And, uh, also, um, for the people too lazy on TikTok, there, we used to I mean, be selective putting on Instagram, but nowadays everything's gone to Instagram. So, um, be sure to check us out there. Anyways, that's it for us today. I'm Matt. That's Carlos. Thank you so much for joining us at Upcoming Attractions. And until next time, laters.